today, NVIDIA's first real CPU is a serious contender. Intel's 13th gen is really expensive. AMD's next gen CPUs are faster than we thought, and NVIDIA's RTX 4090 is already on the way. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, NVIDIA recently shared more details of their first real standalone CPU called NVIDIA Grace. Starting things off, each Grace CPU comes with 72 ARM version 9.0 cores with up to 144 cores by combining two. That makes up their Grace Super Chip. As you already know, it's built on TSMC's 4 nanometer process, which is an optimized 5 nanometers built specifically for NVIDIA. It also comes with up to 512 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory on 30 channels. It also supports up to 68 PCI Express lanes. The most interesting part to me is NVIDIA's chip-to-chip -chip interconnect. It's used to make their Grace Hopper and Grace Super Chip by either combining it with a Hopper GPU or a second Grace CPU. What's wild is that it offers a whopping 900 gigabytes per second bi-directional bandwidth. And according to NVIDIA, this eliminates the cross-socket bottleneck that we normally see. This also supports unified memory so the chips can work together very well. Not only that, but NVIDIA NVIDIA provided more CPU benchmarks that are really interesting. Of course, you should take these with a grain of salt given their first party. Either way, in spec rate 2017, they claim a single gray CPU gets a score of 370, while gray super chip would get 740. When compared to AMD's current Gen Milan, it doesn't quite take the lead, but as Tom's hardware mentions, NVIDIA would have some advantages like power efficiency. All in all, if this holds true, NVIDIA's gray CPU is looking really interesting and definitely not bad at all for a first attempt. Really, it's right up there with the best of them, though this is obviously ARM and not x86. Still, it's great to see new competition in the market. Next up for today, it looks like Intel's next-gen CPUs are going to be more expensive than their 12th-gen parts. Originally found and shared by Momomo underscore US, we have pricing information from a Canadian retailer for Intel's 13th-gen CPUs. And let's just say things are not looking good. But first, as the GPU market continues to cool down, a lot of people are hopeful about a return to normalcy. But what if there was a market where insane resale prices are actually celebrated, where inflation is not an issue but a benefit. And what if I told you that you could enter it at a fraction of the price billionaires pay with today's sponsor? I know, it sounds too good to be true, so let me hit you with some numbers. This market has seen prices outpace the S&P 500's total return by a whopping 164% for the last 26 years. When inflation is over 3%, like it is right now, this market has price appreciation just over 23%. And the best part? It's booming right now. Just a little while back, there was a sale for $195 million, which the New York Times says underscores the global strength of this market at a time of volatility in broader financial markets. The Times also says this is further proof as to why this market can be used as an investment hedge. If you want to learn more, just click the link in the description to head to Masterworks, where you can learn more and get started at a price that works for you. Okay, moving back to pricing, we have the 13,900K and KF, which are listed at 941 and 901 Canadian dollars. That translates to around $726 and $695 US. Basically, these are right around $100 more than last gen. Of course, that's quite a price jump, and while I'd love to chalk it up to early pricing, according to video cards, Intel has already confirmed that they're going up on consumer CPU prices. So this could be the actual price. Maybe not this high, but still more. Next, we have the i7 13700K and KF. And these are 663 and 626 Canadian dollars, which is around 511 and 483 dollars US, an increase of around 72 to 75 dollars. Finally, is the 13600K and KF, which are going for 461 and 424 Canadian dollars. And that becomes roughly 355 and 327 dollars US an increase of between 47 and 68 bucks. All in all, Intel's next gen may be a significant boost over 12th gen, but with price increases like this, it may not be worth it. 
Next up, we have a pretty huge story that shows Ryzen 7000 may be way more powerful than we thought. In a new benchmark from Geekbench, AMD's upcoming epic Genoa CPU was tested. Now, Genoa obviously isn't Ryzen 7000, but it does use the same Zen 4 cores, so the difference in performance here should be similar to Ryzen 7000, at least the single core score, given this Genoa part has more cores than current gen while Ryzen 7000 won't. Either way, WCCF Tech found a benchmark using AMD's current gen Milan with similar clocks to this Genoa benchmark. In fact, the Milan test is clocked at 3.53 GHz while Genoa is at 3.51, so the newer part actually has a slightly lower clock but not really anything to make a difference. Either way, when we compare the two benchmarks, we can see that Genoa was nearly 17% faster in single core versus Milan. Of course, that's close to the over 15% we heard from AMD except that this is at the same clock speed, and we know Ryzen 7000 will get a significant boost in clocks, so it should be much higher. This is basically just IPC performance. As far as multi-core performance, Genoa is 28% faster, but this is a dual 96-core CPU versus a dual 64-core, and like I said before, next-gen Ryzen will have the same core count, so it's not really comparable. Now, one thing that could be helping the performance is the use of AVX 512 and faster memory, but it hopefully didn't help too much here. Either way, this could be great news for AMD's Ryzen 7000. And lastly for today, we have a huge story on NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 4000 GPUs. The story comes from a new post on the Baidu forums and later reported by Video Cards, and it's of the RTX 4090 GPU. Specifically, it's a production schedule of the card. Starting things off, we have the specs of the 8102 GPU, which would be what the RTX 4090 is made from. As you can see, it comes with 24 gigabytes of memory, three DisplayPort connectors, and one HDMI connector. According the video cards had the full document been posted, we could have seen more information like clocks, but that would have also shown the factory that this leaked from, so obviously it makes sense that they blurred it out. Now when we move over here, we actually see the RTX 4090 as well as August 16th. This should be the date for when the cards begin production, which means Nvidia's GPUs are already being made. The date for when they're finished is cut off, but we can see that it's set for sometime this month as well. As the article states, it usually takes a few weeks for production to get to retail stores from the factory. But simply put, NVIDIA's RTX 4000 cards are already on the way, or at least the 4090, which may be the first card NVIDIA announces. Either way, we won't have to wait long. So while that does it for today, are you ready for NVIDIA's RTX 4090, or are you more pumped for Ryzen 7000? Let me know down in the comments below, and definitely make sure to check out Masterworks in the description below. And as always, have a great day!